will never take over America. I also talked about the TPP trade deal, which will be very bad for America and only good for those rats who only care about their companies. Why are they shipping more jobs to Asia now? Even the AFL-CIO opposes this trade deal. And by the way, even, even sold-out England just said no to 100,000 more young Muslim refugees. That's what we talked about so far of the Savage Nation. I also talked about the hidden controlling wing of this government. And they may be ready to do something in the Democrat Party that you would never believe would happen. Call it a fantasy, call it a paranoia, I don't know. But something doesn't add up about dragging Biden up from nowhere because he can't win against any Republican. Biden is no way this guy could win. They're trying to bring him up from the old, it's, it's like the Communist Party was. They'd resurrect some old warrior from the early days of the, uh, of the revolution. That's Biden. And then they're rehabilitating him. And they're exercising the horse, putting him out on the track, having him walk around the track so that the crowds get used to seeing him walk. They thought he was comatose somewhere. And so if they want to put him in, you know, they figure, oh, let's just get him ready. They're putting him in the dugout, in other words, what we call a bench in radio, where someone's always ready to take your place if you should if you'd slip and fall to like the pilot on AA. That's all. All your good friends are waiting to take the microphone. <laughs> so we can talk about any of these topics on the hour that remains. The phone number is 855-407-282. As you know, in this hour, I generally take more calls. And I play some of the great sound that the guys have pulled together from early in the morning. So what did you hear in that interview that's unique? Because I mean, hey, I heard it. He didn't say anything new. I heard it all before. What did he say that's new? W, let's go to something new here. KSFO, Michael, welcome to the program. What's your comment on the Trump interview? Hi, Dr. Savage. I think you were, he's personal. He's, he's not uh, pandering to, you know, big business. He's making it personal to to China, to Russia, and actually discussing things as opposed to... Yeah, I don't know why people say he's not specific. He was as specific as, as a heart attack just now. Yes, I, I agree. I, I totally agree. I mean, it's like getting a blood test back that says your cholesterol is off, and here are the, here are the numbers. He didn't mince words. He didn't ham and haw. He didn't uh, play it safe. He said it like it is, the way most of us see it as. Talking right, okay, you win a free copy of Government Zero. Stay on the line. Next caller. Next to caller. Callers from all over the country. Charles on WFTL in Fort Lauderdale. Go ahead. What's your comment? Yeah, I agree with you that um, Trump is a respectful man. He's got to be respectful because he's a master negotiator. And this is one thing that nobody else brings to the table. This guy has gone from riches to rags to riches again. And it all is because he's a master negotiator. He wants to win, he negotiates to win, and he celebrates when he wins. That's what makes him <laughs> yeah. great. Perhaps, maybe that's why I relate to him. Because I've been up and down so many times, it's a, it's a seesaw in my life. And you do have to pull yourself up. And you can't do it by cursing people. You can only do it by blessing people. Let me tell you that. I agree. You know, I mean, if anyone's listening to the show who's not doing well in life, and you're embittered, I got a little bit of advice for you. Uh, don't let anyone see your bitterness because it's not going to get you anything. People don't want to be around a loser. They only want to be around a winner. I'm telling you, that's the absolute truth of negotiation. They want to hear somebody who has something to offer them and someone who's a bit positive about it. They don't want to hear someone complaining about how, what someone did to them and how bad things are. No one has time for that. That's the reality of business and it's the reality of politics. Thanks. Stay in the line. Government Zero goes out to you. Why do you like Donald Trump? Why don't you like Donald Trump? Who heard the interview and says, you know what, now that I really heard him for the third time on your show, I'm not going to vote for him. Anyone have that to say? You're welcome to call the one open line at 855-407-282. I promise I'll only tear your head off, not your arms. Line one, WMAC, welcome to the Savage Nation. Go ahead, please. Hey, Michael, this is Tina, and I uh, heard Donald for, I think, the second interview on your show. And um, I've been on the fence a little bit. But after hearing his humbleness, and I don't know, just there was a different tone to him this side. Yes, I, there was. You heard tone. You heard a different tone. And I can almost tell you why that tone was different. You want me to tell you why I think he didn't sound the same this time? Please, sir. Because of me. He heard it in my tone. He, reacted, he was reacting to my tone, which has changed slightly. You know that, don't you? 
I, I don't doubt that for one second, Michael. I love your show. Um, I am an I'm an outside account manager. I work in outside sales, so I get to listen to you every day, just about. And you are what keeps me going. I work so hard. I have a very good job, but it's, it's very, very tough where I am. It's hard to make sales. And hearing Donald today, it just makes me feel so much better about my, our future. Well, that's right. That's what I was saying to him about my feelings, is that he's, a, he's enabled me to be proud of my successes instead of hiding it like I did something wrong. This country is so twisted under Obama and the left-wing haters that every successful person wants to hide their success for fear that these jealous, fake revolutionaries will somehow take take something away from them. Well, Donald is the new sheriff in town. He's the real America, and I hope to God he gets to the finish line. Stay on the line. I'm sending you a copy of Government Zero right now on The Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Someone wrote this. To the young people who love this song and music, here is a romantic theme, and this music was played at a time when you danced holding your partner, you could dance with any girl or woman, but you held your girl closer. She was special. You danced as one, and you could feel her mind and body as you held her closely. Today's music, he writes, is tribal. There is no romance, and the words sound like drunken street talk. It is very hard to explain this to you because you may have little reference to the what I am saying until you have been glided around a dance floor in the arms of someone you love. To this and many songs like it, you haven't lived. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful observation, not written by myself, but someone who, who wrote it instead uh, underneath this song on YouTube, where I often find old rock and roll songs. And I thought I would share it with you because uh, people like to say the 50s were a time of Neanderthals in America and everything was bad and this and that. But there were some things that were quite good and some things that would be great to bring back into America including some of the music, by the way, and some of the feelings of that time, in plain English. So here we are, talking about the election, Donald Trump, ISIS, the so-called trade deal, uh, Putin, who he said he met. I said, could you do business with him? He said, yes, because I'm a negotiator. I mean, he was very clear about that. Apparently, Obama can't do a deal with Putin. Putin uh, disrespects him. I told you what after that. You remember the handshake, the famous one of last week? I mean, oh, look, things happen so fast it's hard to remember. You remember there at the U.N., week before the Pope came here with his hogwash. Then the U.N. meeting and Obama and the other corrupt officials with their, their hogwash. Their those How many years have I told you it's nothing but a bunch of child molesters and grifters at the U.N.? Now it comes out, one of them stole a half a million dollars. You hear? Another genius they found from, from Antigua to run something there. To build a basketball court in his house in Dobbs Ferry. My God. But I'm telling you something else. I'm getting somewhere else with this, which is that the world needs an American hero. The world needs an American winner. We've had nothing but American bumblers and losers for the last. How, Bush was eight years bumbler. Now we have this shady character in the White House. It's almost seven years now of the shady character. That's 15 years without a clear American winner. We've been suffering at the beginning of the century. Put this in context. If we survive this president, and God hope, God pray we will, and we get through 10 years after this president, and the immigration is rolled back, people are deported, the Muslim influx is stopped at the gates. No more. No more. Where Americans feel they're safe in their own country to speak English. If we can get there again, people will look back and say, how the heck did it get so bad under Obama? How did they find a character like him and foist him on the American people? How did he get elected twice? How did they fool Eddie so completely? The guy with a ratchet set on his brain who votes for him and still votes for him. I told you that I have many dwellings and one of them is in a very lily white little suburban neighborhood. And I noticed something intriguing. One creep who I don't even know here, who has a, an Obama sticker on his bumper, Obama 2008, he's trying to like 
tell everyone how liberal he is and how good. No matter what Obama does, he says, Obama right or wrong, you know, it's like Zeke Heil, right? So he has this Obama stuff on his house. Long after other liberals took it and threw it in the garbage, he has it up there to show you what a great liberal he is. He's the first in the neighborhood to put up the spider webs for Halloween for his brats. I want you to think about that. The bigger the liberal, they're the first to put up the, the Halloween uh, exhibits. Go and look in your own neighborhood, see if I'm wrong. They celebrate Halloween and they, they uh, you get it? I mean, it was just an, a social observation. The first spider webs on the fence are his already, Mr. the Obama lover. He's got the white spider webs up already with the goblins. You say, well, what are you actually saying here? Just a social observation that they won't teach you at Harvard or Yale, which has been infiltrated with morons. I don't know where they get these people from. Well, I don't know where they get them from. No, you know exactly where they get them from. Did you see the one about the lesbian uh, deacon over there, whatever she is, in England? She wants to take the crosses off churches in her area of England because it's offensive to Muslims. I'm, I'm not making it up. If I was making it up, I, you'd say he's making it up. Here, left side, it's linked from a British paper. Take a look at her face. Classic lesbian do-gooder. A lesbian bishop wants to remove crosses from a church to make it more inclusive and to allow Muslims to pray there. Can anyone tell me of a mosque anywhere in the universe that is inclusive? Uh, no callers on that one? Any, any interdenominational morons out there? Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Let me explain why the left hates uh, <clears throat> uh, Putin. And let me explain why the left is terrified that Trump will win. I have told you that Obama and the left-wing cabal has virtually steamrolled the entire world. They've crushed virtually everyone in their path. Obama crushed Netanyahu, has reduced him to a, to basically an almost irrelevant man. No matter what Netanyahu did, he's been crushed by the progressive Islamist agenda. So what's left for them to do? What is Obama, what is his game plan? Where does he want to go? Well, it's Russia. It's Russia. This administration has gone out of its way to antagonize and demonize Putin and Russia. Why? You have to ask why. It's not about Ukraine. That's the cover story. It's not about Ukraine. Post-communist Russia's interests don't always align with the United States's. But Russia would be a better fit than would Iran, wouldn't it? Russia is a large, powerful first world nation that faces the same kinds of threats from radical Islam that we face only much closer to home. And so from an economic and political perspective, it is in the interests of the American people to foster closer ties with Russia. But my friends, here it comes. Unfortunately, Russia and her nationalist, conservative president do not fit in with the progressive Islamist agenda. Putin's domestic policies are not gay friendly enough for the progressives. In 2013, Putin signed a law that made it illegal to promote propaganda of non-traditional sexual relations to minors. It subjects anyone who promotes homosexuality to minors a fine. The liberal media went crazy. And if you believe what the vermin in the media are saying about it, you think Russian police are rounding up homosexuals. But that's not what happened. The law does not make homosexuality illegal. As Putin himself said, quote, this should not look as if we intend to persecute people of some non-traditional orientation. One does not preclude the other. I believe that such balanced approach is absolutely the right one. Such a balanced approach is the right one. And then I write this on page 103 of Government Zero, from where I am quoting. Personally, I would oppose such a law here in the United States. But let's put things in perspective. If you promote homosexuality to children in Russia, you may be fined. Compare that to what happens to you just for being a homosexual in a radical Islamist country. There you get thrown off a rooftop and stoned to death. Where is the progressive outrage over that? Just as they looked the other way while Stalin and Mao killed 100 million people in the 20th century, progressives can look the other way while the Islamo-fascists burn people alive, rape them, enslave them, and cut off their heads. Where are the so-called radical feminists on the wholesale enslavement and rape of non-Muslim girls as young as eight years of age. 
Putin offends the other half of the progressive Islamist alliance with his policies against radical Islam, and I don't have to read any further. In Zero Military, in the book, I ask where